ぞ若いのこれは正しい道を進んでいる証拠だ私は強い Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to build and use Toa. She's in faction Strategic Master, Origin, and Tensei. First, we'll compare both of her class max stats. First one is a infantry class, and the second one is a flyer class, Pegasus Master. So the stats is pretty much the same when it comes to the attack. But when it comes to the other stuff,、uh, the infantry, the wandering swordsman is a little bit more tankier with a little bit more HP and a little bit more defense. On the other side, Pegasus Master has lower HP, but well, lower HP, lower defense, but a little bit more magic defense and skills. I think both classes are good, it's just all preference. Talent Wandering Strategist. When receiving buffs from allies, duration plus one. For every buff on this unit, attack and defense plus 1, 2, 3, 4 percent at 6 stars, up to 5, 10, 15, 20 percent at 6 stars. The first part is duration plus 1, so basically means she already has a l t i m a l e r s exclusive equip on her in her talent. So basically, anything you receive from skills, from gears, that will. An example for gear would be if you have Fury of Tear, that effect will extend for one turn. For skills, for example, Gospel, instead of two turns, will extend to three turns. For Enchant, example, Breeze, instead of one turn, it will give you two turns. So let's say if you have Plushy on, for example, Liana, now your Gospel lasts three turns, but if you apply this on Toa, that will be four turns. Second part basically means you have to have at least four buffs in order to unleash her full potential. Bonding. First three are easy. The fourth one you need Maya to unlock. And the fifth one, which is the most important in my opinion, you need Ares. Now I will go over the skills. The first one, we should be familiar with it, but in case you're new, I will go over every single skill. So Raging Thunder, cost two, cooldown two, range one, span single. Physical damage attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.5 times damage. It grants wind ride before battle. When HP is over 50%, damage taken from melee attack decreases by 15% last two turns. Tactical Advice This is her exclusive skill. Cost 1, cooldown 4, range 3, span single. So this is an assist skill. Copy 3 of this unit's dispellable buffs onto an ally unit. Max of 2 turn duration. After use, may move in under 2 blocks and attack. When using this skill, Buffs on this unit will not be decreased in duration. So if you're playing a hero with off faction, whoever can faction buff Toa, Toa can kind of faction buff that hero without buffs. This is a very good skill. It also helps her cool down other skills because she can move after. Skill command cost 2. This command skill plus 20% for all allies within 3 spaces, and I still think it's one of the most useless skills in the game. Blade of Freedom, cost 2, cooldown 2, range 1, span single. I think this is the third character who has this. The first character is Alfred and Parn. Physical damage attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.4 times damage. Before battle, disable enemy passive skills last one turn. And this disable passive is 100% unless they can immune to it. So I think this is a very good skill for her in both PvE and PvP. Gale, cost 1, passive. After taking action, 20% chance to act again. Swords Breath, cost 1. Passive, after attacking, deals the damage in one reign around self for 0.1 times damage. This skill is actually very good in Apex. You can kill heroes who can revive, such as Yulia, Elwyn, and it's only cost 1, so probably it will be pretty common in Apex. Savage Attack. Cost 2, cooldown 3, range 1, span single. Physical damage attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.2 times damage. If you are on a defensive terrain, the enemy will be stunned before combat. Last one turn. This icon looks similar to Shield Bash, but it's different because it requires you to be on a defensive terrain to stun an opponent. Not very recommended because it's very situational. Attack support, bracket L, cost 2. Passive. After action, grant two allies within two blocks damage dealt plus 
as well as immunity to attack intelligent reduction and effects that silence active skills last one turn pretty useless on her since she is a dps okay this is a very interesting skill it's her core skill dominant strike cost two cooldown four range one span single physical damage attacks a single enemy dealing 1.5 times damage for every one buff on this unit damage dealt plus two percent up to ten percent so you need five buffs to get maximum damage before entering battle if this unit has a special effect from a fusion buff so if you have faction buff then this unit will attack first and if at the same time the target does not have a special effect from a fusion buff then this attack cannot be guarded against so if the opponent that you're targeting this is an apex skill completely any opponent that you're targeting if they don't have faction buff they cannot guard so it, it ignores guard so buffs such as gospel mass attack mass resist mass protect they don't count as faction buff so beware of that if you're fighting against toa okay now off to her 3c awakening skill ancient battle formation there's a lot of parts in this 3c so we're going to talk about the passive immune to unbuffable if this unit is under the effects of formation and fade or formation wall then soldiers gain physical damage taken minus 35 percent i like the first part immune to unbuffable but the second part damage but the second part where soldiers gain physical damage taken minus 35 percent makes me think that there's no reason to bring holy pegasus you're probably better off bringing another troops that can deal a little bit more damage now part two active choose one of the following effects formation and fade is an assist gain command units within three blocks gain attack in plus 15 percent but for battle deal 0.5 times toa's attack as a fixed damage and when defeating an enemy with a skill that skill gets cooldown minus one last three turns cannot be dispelled formation wall assist gain command units within three blocks gain defense plus 50 percent immunity to fixed damage and displacement last three turns cannot be dispelled both formation are assist skills and she will create an aura within three blocks all these units will gain these effects very straightforward if you're going to attack choose formation and fade if you feel like you need more defense choose formation wall after using one of the above effects may move three blocks and attack deploy the aura and then you can move again set the cooldown of ancient battle formation to five turns remember that initially it has no cooldown but after you use it there is a cooldown of five turns I'll first cover the infantry build. Recommended weapon, we have Seal Guardian. Mimir's War Axe, I think this is probably her best when it comes to PvE because she can extend the buff for one extra turn, so this is perfect for her. After you kill it, and recommend the armor. I think she is good against physical, like very strong against physical attacks, but she's a little bit lacking when it comes to magic damage. So these three armor is to help reduce her magic damage taken so Gaia's armor is good for that and I think probably the best would be protector's armor perfect for both range attack and melee attack now if you don't have protector's armor I think Aeolus battle armor would also help her survive magic damage recommend the helmet furry of tear is the best because you can extend that effect for one extra turn and usually I don't recommend Chief's helmet, but since she has a lot of move again, or I should say act again moves, so she can apply these on at least two units. And fine power mass for the same reasons, since she can act again, there's a chance, or there's more than one chance for her to apply the debuff on an opponent. Talk about the accessory in the fire class session, so I don't have to repeat myself twice. Flyer build recommended weapon when it comes to single target flyer DPS Renarok is always the best choice 
then Scarlet Reaper and Throng Guardian. I think they're both equally good. I guess if you, if you just want more damage, Scarlet Reaper. If you want more, if you want her to be tankier, Throng Guardian. Recommend the armor. If you don't have any of these two, any armor is fine. The last rights will make her extremely hard to kill because of her 3C reduced by 30%. So this is 40% on the hero. That one's on the soldier. Azure Legend would be the second choice, which will also make her very tanky. Recommended helmet, lots of option. Doomsday is to hope that your act again will apply a heal block on your opponent. King's Crown is great. You can buff your opponent and then do your next action. Feather Crown is to make her super tanky. Okay, now it comes to recommend accessories. I think the best is a Wing Shin Guard because of how tanky she is against physical damage. The rest you can choose whichever increases attack or if you well, I don't really recommend. You can definitely use um, Bracer if you have Last Right and makes her really hard to kill. But I don't know if it's going to reduce her killing ability by a lot. But yeah, it's all preference. Okay, recommended accessories. So first I want to say I don't recommend Rough C because she has a lot of um, built-in damage reduction already and I think Rough C is not necessary. I think Breeze would probably be the best as I explained earlier because of her um, buff extension bonus. Breeze does prop. You will get that instead of one turn, you'll get it two turns. Full Moon would give her higher attack and defense at higher HP. Okay, enchant stats. This is where you use your mastery stone. I would say always prioritize attack and then HP, defense or magic defense up to you. You probably have to um, see how your enchant on your gears do and then you probably want to balance it out here. Arena PvP stones, I would go attack, HP, defense, magic defense and you can choose suffer or crit. I think suffer is a little bit better because it makes her harder to die. Suffer is a crit rate not the crit damage. Okay, now our last part here, soldier choices. I'll talk about what I don't recommend. What I don't recommend is Holy Pegasus because now you're not dealing enough damage. And again, Towa already has a lot of damage reduction ability built in into her kit. And then the next one I don't recommend is Dragon Trooper. Same reason. And especially since Towa can act again, since Towa has act again moves, she can easily reach her target and dragon troopers overall damage is a little bit weaker than griffin knight you don't need the part about the damage reduction so dragon trooper is not recommended in my opinion okay so recommended soldier i have been mentioning them a lot of times so griffin knight i would recommend high damage high defense when hp above 80 percent and she can easily meet that requirement Next we have Dragoon, that's the basically the cavalry version of Griffin Knight. And then last but not least is Hoplet. If you don't, well let's say for PvP, if you don't know what your opponent is going to bring when it comes to the troops, you don't want to guess and you don't want to be in a disadvantage situation, Hoplet would solve that problem. Alright guys, that is it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. This video helped you understand how to use and build this character. See you guys next time. Bye bye.